When many people hear the term robotics as an engineering field, they may think of an oddly specific field going into one type of engineering. But in general, it's actually the opposite. The robotics field is a mixture of the three largest engineering disciplines that each in turn are in very general themselves. The disciplines being mechanical, electrical, and computer science. Each one of these three disciplines has a major developmental role in the field of engineering and in any robotics project and must communicate effectively as a team to reach the project's end goal. So every joint team starts with a brainstorming session where all three engineers of this discipline meet to talk about the key aspects of their project and the end goal. The end goal's limitations, both physical, electrical, and programming, computer science oriented, must be determined at these meetings by all three disciplines talking about what they can and cannot do in the sense of possibility in both time and resource wise. For each of these disciplines to work together, they must understand the limitations and possibilities of what each other team can do. Once these limitations are discovered by all teams, then a loose timescale for progress is developed as soon as the end goals are developed. The first part of development usually goes to the mechanical engineers, who must design the physical makeup and limitations of the robot itself. This can come from motors that make the robot move in certain directions, physical models that show the stress, strain, and load dispersion on a robot at any given time to see if it'll hold up to the standards it'll meet in its field and be able to meet the expectations of its working job. Usually at this point, certain materials that were already chosen will be tested to see if they can fit the necessary mechanical properties to meet these requirements. If the materials end up not working like they planned, they can always go back and hit the drawing board and try again. Once the materials and physical makeup of the robot is settled upon, then rapid prototyping begins, and usually a rough mock-up of the actual robot will be made for the future development teams to work on and test their models and systems on. Once the physical component, materials, and systems are laid out and designed, electrical engineers can now about go giving life to the body of the robot. The electrical engineer makes almost like a network of nerves and veins that carry both the energy that allows the robot to work, but also the pathways that carry and deliver information to and from the robot's control centers so that it may respond and react to any given stimuli to perform the given task. Formulas such as discharge and charging times for capacitors use standard deviations from tests on thousands of capacitors to determine the cycling times of their charge rates. Statistics also uses random testing and samples of large groups of components such as resistors, diodes, and capacitors, and even the current flowing through a circuit to estimate the average of these rates so that we can get a particular average output for these devices in their line of duty. After schematic designs and information pathways are ready to be prototyped, the electrical engineer tests his circuit. This being usually the final step of the design process, the computer science team fully integrates and tests the code that will go on the robot, which is essentially its logic and responses, or the way it thinks when it experiences certain stimuli in the environment that it's working in. These stimuli and response to them define how it will work inside of its given job description. The main programming languages used in the robotics field are C and C++, shown because statistical formulas show that they are the fastest of these, these languages, and therefore most components on the markets are readily made to be programmed with these languages. The majority of algorithms that go into programming a robot can be entirely based around statistics, from machine learning programs that allow the robots to run their own statistics calculations to make the best choice in any given situation, or to pathing algorithms that calculate the fastest path a robot can take based off previous trials or generally seeing the layout of the environment and judging based off evidence how fast it'll take to get from point A to point B through certain terrains. And once this part of the design development is finished, the robot prototype can be fully tested to see if it meets the standards and then go back to the drawing board to fix any errors or adjust any minor performance issues that the engineers see as a problem for their end goals. So you can see that all three disciplines that make up the very general and large field of robotics heavily rely on statistics in their daily design and implementation into the final product that will be their robot. Of all of the engineers' grand challenges, engineering the tools for discovery and advancing health informatics. Robotical engineers are the chief designers behind things such as deep water submarines, rockets, and extraterrestrial vehicles. These such tools allow us to not only better understand and explore the world around us, but also our place in the universe. Wearable and medical electronics such as exoskeletons, small nanobots that monitor the bloodstream, and even your average pacemaker can be chalked up to the designs of robotic engineers, with these technologies being some of the biggest breakthroughs in our generation's medical research.